Greetings to all soldering enthusiasts and people who are interested in power electronics in one way or another. In this video, we will test out this gadget. It is a step up DCAC converter. You can find a link to the cheapest option for such a converter in the description. Also in the description, by following the first link, you can read a detailed article about this converter. This converter outputs several voltages, specifically 18, 220, and 380 volts. By using the 380 and 220 volt taps, you can also obtain a voltage of about 160 volts. By connecting a pure sine wave generation board to the output of such a converter, which are sold on AliExpress, we theoretically get a voltage converter from 12 to 220 volts with a pure sine wave output. That's why I wanted to test this board. The converter board is compact, built on a push-pull scheme based on the fairly advanced SG3525PWM controller. Using this chip, you can easily organize output voltage stabilization, but this wasn't done here. Therefore, the output voltage will deviate from the set value depending on the input voltage and the output load. There are two pairs of power transistors, the famous RF3205. Naturally, a heatsink for them was not included in the package. You can now see the main parameters of the converter on the screen. And let's see if they match the real ones. First, let's assess the quality of the soldering under a microscope. Everything here is quite good. The board is good, it has metallization, holes, and the material is fiberglass. The optimal input voltage is 12 volts. At the same time, the no load current should not exceed 350 milliamperes. Let's check it. And, this is fully confirmed. The current is even lower. By the way, I forgot to mention, to start the inverter, you need to bridge the hole for the switch with a jumper. Or you can install a switch. This is, the remote control, system. According to the manufacturer, the operating frequency is around 20 kHz. And our multimeter confirms this. The pulses, naturally, have a rectangular fill of about 50%. Now let's check the output voltages. Considering that the converter is unstabilized, the voltage is within the norm. The tolerance is quite narrow, and we give it a plus as well. The rather low operating frequency is concerning, as it will cause the core to heat up over time, even if there is no load on the output. Finally, the traditional output power test. I remind you that the manufacturer claims the power in KW. In principle, everything is fine here as well. My load is around 450W. Among the drawbacks, I would note. First, the absence of any protections, not even a simple fuse. So don't even think about shorting the output contacts. Second, there is no stabilization of the output voltage. Yes, that is indeed a downside. And third, the low operating frequency, which causes the transformer to heat up. Among the advantages, compactness and versatility. You can rewind the transformer to any desired voltage and use the converter, for instance, as a power supply for a powerful dual polarity amplifier in case the amplifier needs to be powered in a car. Second is the price. I would call it affordable. $13 and some change, considering the cost of the core, keys, and chip not from Chinese stores. The price is generally acceptable. Conclusion A great thing for those who understand inverters. By spending another $25, we buy a sign board, connect it to this converter, and get an inverter from 12 to 220 volts with a pure sine wave. And all this for less than $40. You will also find the link to the sign board in the description. I personally recommend it, it's a great thing. Well, today's test has come to an end. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye.